all of you, and I will be leaving Flintridge Sacred Heart Academy today. You as graduating seniors, and I am moving to face new challenges in my own life, in the wilds of Wisconsin. In thinking about this speech, I realize that I have spent over a third of my life living or working on the hill. I can remember the day that I sat where you are sitting today, hoping that the commencement speaker would be really quick, so that I could move on to the parties that I would be attending throughout the night. I am the last person in my class that would have been nominated to give a commencement speech. <laughs> There were many more important events that I would have considered worthy of my attention. I can remember my own parents being so upset with me as I drove off the hill with my boyfriend instead of them. <laughs> Over the years, I have watched 15 classes of young women graduate from Peshach. Each time as I've seen a class graduate, I think and watch what I should have taken from that day. Yes, graduation parties are extremely important. And I remember sitting where you're sitting now the whole time looking in the crowd for that nice Loyola boy I was dating at the time. But in fact, I married a very nice St. Francis boy. In <laughs> you came here four years ago as young girls, and you are leaving today as young women, hopefully ready to start a new part of your life. Are you ready to leave the hill? Have you thought about what you may be taking with you today? Of course, there's a certain amount of academic knowledge, math. I never did get that one down. <laughs> Science, foreign language, English. But what else are ta you taking with you? Four years ago, your parents and you decided to join the community of Bashan, a community of women who are going to journey together for the next four years. Some of you will continue your journeys together depending on where you're attending college in the fall. But no matter where you're going in the fall and later in life, you will always remain part of this community. When I look back, I believe this community gave me the ability to be the best I can be. I had a certain teacher, some of you remember Sister Mona, who never gave up on me. In fact, she could be a bit annoying how she never gave up on me when I wanted to give up on myself. Years later, that same woman hired me as director of college counseling here at Peshaw. There are many of you sitting out there who have had that same type of relationship with a faculty member, a mentor who pushed you, prodded you to be the best you can be. My own daughter, who is also an alumna of this school, still wants to know how certain faculty members are doing when we're catching up. These teachers also gave her the courage to be the best she can be. When things got hard, they were there for her. When she didn't get a difficult math problem, yes, she's not good at math either, or learning to write that perfect essay, or encouraged her in her passion for politics, or when a boyfriend was just being a jerk. They were here for her. Hopefully this community has enriched your soul, made you think about who you are as an individual and who you want to become. Being part of this community is unique in that it is a community of women. This community of women has continued to thrive and grow for the last 80 years. Thousands of women have sat where you sit today. They have become mothers, doctors, lawyers, <laughs> engineers, businesswomen, and educators. They were also told from their first day on the Hill that anything is possible. And they have followed their own dreams and made them realities. The women of our community have also faced many challenges in their lives, illness, a loss of a parent, a spouse, a child, or a crisis of faith. No matter how we are blessed in this world, life's challenges are never far away. It is how we face those challenges that determine who we are going to be as human beings. Hopefully, as you leave to embrace the best of what life has to offer, this community has given you the values and strength to meet life's challenges. 
As women, we are called to various walks of life. We never know how we may be called to step out of our own worlds to make a difference in others' lives. Over the last four years, in classrooms and in service projects, you have been shown how important it is to serve others, that in service to others, we become the best of who we are. In service to others, we are extending our community to them. Could you be like the biblical Ruth, whom you learned about in Mr. DeMillo's <coughs> Old Testament class? Ruth, that once her own husband died, she'd stayed with her mother-in-law, moved to a new country in poverty to take care of her because that is what she felt called to do. You may remember the quote and heard it used in many marriage ceremonies. Do not ask me to abandon or forsake you. For wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. Your God, my God. Wherever you die, I will die and there be buried. Almost a thousand years ago, two young women decided to dedicate themselves to a life of prayer. They did not see this as anything spectacular. Many young women of the time were doing the same thing. They had no idea how this decision would change their lives or the lives of others. Through their own lives of prayer, service, educational opportunities, and support of their communities, they have helped change the church and how individuals saw their lives in relationship to God. They both faced great opposition to their ideas. At times in their lives, they were both investigated as heretics. Both were later recognized as theologians. I am talking about the Dominican, Catherine of Siena, who in 1970 was named a doctor of the church and Julia of Norwich. Catherine was a crusader for change in the church, wanting to end the corruption and separation that she saw. She stepped out of the traditional role of the religious and traveled to France, Rome, to be a strong voice for change. At the same time that Catherine was demanding change, Julia was sitting in a tiny hermitage in England, writing about how she saw God in everything, and that she believed that individuals had the ability to have a personal relationship with their creator, a truly revolutionary idea for the time. Are you willing to stand up for what you believe in? It's a hard question to answer until you're put into the situation that tests you. Both women stepped out of their small worlds and made an impact on Western civilization. When we look at recent history, we can see women who were also called to step out of their comfort zone. I do not believe that Dorothy Day, who founded the Catholic Workers' Movement during the Great Depression of the 1930s, set out to do so. The Catholic Workers' Movement continues to this day, offering houses of hospitality for the jobless, the forsaken, the least of my brothers. Day's life is a story of God's amazing grace in calling a girl from the tenements of Chicago to be a woman who would change America. Could you be like Edith Stein? Edith was born to a devout Jewish family and raised in Germany. She converted to Catholicism as a young woman and eventually joined the Carmelite order. She was a professor, a theologian. She saw her life as serving others through her teaching and academic pursuits until the Nazis took over Germany. Edith's community wanted to send her to Switzerland where she would find safety from persecution. Instead, she chose to stay in Holland with a younger sister, where she decided that this greatest service she could be called to do was living and serving others that were being persecuted for their race and their faith. Eventually, Edith, along with her younger sister, Rose, was sent to Auschwitz, where she died. Now, of course, these are examples of rare women in extraordinary circumstances in your careers. Wherever you are, each of us, at one time or another, are called to step out of our own little worlds to help those in need. Remember, you can become an extraordinary woman when you share your life and experience with other women, giving them the strength to live with the challenges and joys of their own lives. This community that you are saying farewell to today has given you the foundation in order to say yes to whatever life's joys and challenges may come your way. This community is here for you 
when you need a helping hand, when you need to share your stories, when you face the challenges and joys of life. Today, this community wraps its arms around the Romero family and their sorrow with love and support. May they feel all our love in their lives. Your parents have been the most important part of this community. They have supported you both emotionally and financially to help make this day possible for you. They have walked with you through your own joys and challenges. Please let them know how important they are to you. This community has embraced me in both the joys and challenges of my own life. And as I reflect back on my own graduation day, I know that I did not realize the true gift I had received. Not today. Because today is a day for celebration and parties. But in the near future, take just a few minutes to remind yourself what this community has done for you. As you leave to take on the new adventures in your lives, you are leaving, but this community will always be here when you need them. There's a great quote from Micah in the Old Testament that, what, that makes what I have said sound so simple. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love tenderly, and to walk humbly with your God. May all of your dreams come true. Then share them with others, and remember to share them with the community on the hill that has given you so much. I will miss the hill, and all of you, as crazy as you all are, you have been my community of strength for so many years. I, like you, have decided to move on to a new community and share what I have learned here with all of them. May you do the same. I want to thank Sister Carolyn, Sister Celeste, and the entire faculty and staff for being with me on my journey. You are all so very dear to me, especially Judy Smith. There's a great Ignatian motto that says, men and women for others. Judy Smith, who has walked with me hand in hand for almost 15 years, has truly been my woman for others. Now I do want you to celebrate because you are the class of 2012 and I may you share your joy and love of life with all. <laughs>